player and the, and, and the drummer, or the bass player and the singer. It's always the guitar player, then either the drummer or the singer. Oh, yeah. Um, the reason I think that me and Craig write together so much is because we actually had a situation in the past where our other guitar player, who was primarily rhythm back then, had left the band. So we were kind of in a, like, what do we do mode? And me and him just decided that we were going to get together and have one-on-one -on -one practices running through the sets and just trying to build that chemistry up, that rhythm chemistry and just writing chemistry. And, you know, we got a whole album worth of material out of it. And, you know, it we just kept working with it and it got better and better. And now it's like we can pretty much communicate without even talking. Yeah, you guys yeah. can look at each other and know when the change-ups are going to be. Now, Craig, do you ever look at Jordan and go, man, do this. dun 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 Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> that's that's the biggest complaint that I have. <laughs> like, I, I know a ton of drummers that also play guitar for the simple fact that they can like hear a riff in their head, and then instead of being like, "Well, just go," dun, 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 you know, like they can just pick up a guitar and just play the like the bare minimum thing to play to kind of get the point across. So uh, hopefully in the future I'll be able to do that. I'm I've. I'm getting fed up with my dun dun duns. <laughs> no, that's what I that's what I always do, man. I always do that. that I yeah, I, I guess you be more complicated with it. And then when you guys, okay, so here's another question: When you guys are writing music, when you first are writing the song for the very first time, do you go in there and try to perfect it already, or do you go in there, hey, let's just get like the intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, end. And then get the basics of that, or do you got to try to perfect it already? Because I know guitar players sometimes like to perfect that shit, man. We on a, I, our writing process, honestly, we we try to focus on getting the skeleton of a song first. Um, then you can always go back and add those details in. But as long as something we're enjoying it, that's the thing. What we're going to build on it. We have a we have a cool intro idea. We you know we'll go with it, and then from there, try to take it into a verse, so on and so on. Then once we finish it, then it's okay. What can we add into this? Okay, I'm gonna ask, I am gonna direct this question towards John right now. Um, do you already have a list of songs pre-written, or does when you hear the song, does it inspire you to write music to it? Uh, typically, I have stuff pre-written, and then uh, I'll take lyrics that I have and uh, like say if I have like six different sets of lyrics, I'll pull and take stuff from different places and try to make it work. But with this particular album that we're currently working on, um, it's being written as we go. Okay. And now does, does your bass player, does he ever influence some change in the guitar structures? He'll be like, oh, this would be really cool if we kind of did this here instead. Yes. Um, yeah. Actually, okay. one of the songs that we're going to be playing on here tonight, Suffering in Silence, the entire end of it was inspired by Brandon. Oh, really? Yeah, he, he started messing around with something, and me and him just were like, hey, that's cool. And then we kind of tweaked it a little bit, and it ended up becoming, you know, like the last almost minute of the song. You know, no one gives the bass player enough credit, man. Bass player never gets credit. He's just the guy that follows the guitar player around. <laughs> I was a bass player before guitar player, so I try to give him credit. <laughs> yeah, so you you understand you understand what it's like. The Absolutely. <laughs> Then you know, and the drummer. So honestly, if you're in a band, the singer you change the singer out. You can't ever change the singer out. You change the singer out. You change the whole entire band, right? The other person that you can't. Pretty much. Yep. The other. That's why every band that's ever been like famous. I. I mean, there may be a band. I'm sure they're out there. I can't think of one off the top of my head. And some of you like an idiot. This band. But can you name off the top of your head one band that was signed, very well known, famous band that they changed their singer and continued to make big things happen? The only one I can think of is not even metal. It's just rock, and it'd be ACDC, but they're, they're literally, like, the only exception. I, don't know. I think switched to ACDC. Van Halen. Okay. Van Halen. No. <laughs> I mean, it's arguable. Grim. I'm not going to say that Van Hagar was better than, than David Lee Roth, but, you know. I, I, <laughs> um, what would you say, John? Yeah, yeah. Uh, kill switch. Kill switch. Oh, yeah. kill switch, dude. Yeah. The only, the yeah only, see, went. I don't know these things. The only thing I can hey. think of is uh, the only thing I could think of was Drowning Pool because their singer passed away. They got a new singer, but then they had like one song. I don't think they did much after that. They did. Yeah. They actually went through <laughs> yeah. 
the three vocalists that I can think of after their original singer died. Uh, Johnny Poole? Yeah, they, they at one point had uh, the guy that used to sing for Soil, and then they've had two other guys that I've never heard of before. <laughs> but I don't think either one of them lasted very long. <laughs> yeah, it's hard, it's hard to find a singer. <clears throat> it's also hard if you're already in a band that's already doing things to kind of find that match. And then it's hard to get your fans to really want to, you know, listen to what you guys have going on. People always like the original. Not always, but people do like the original, I think, usually more than the new. So since you guys were talking about uh, suffering in silence, go, let's go ahead and, and uh, give an ode there to your bass player. And let's play that song instead of the Inferno. And we'll play the Inferno next. Hell yeah. This song goes out to every bass player in the world of bass players <laughs> in the universe of bass players. Here we go. Wait, suffering in silence. Now here we go. Excellent. Was for all the bass players in the world suffering in silence. You are no longer silent. 
<laughs> you have a voice now. Thanks, <laughs> Mr. Brandon Rowe. Your, your voice is heard. Okay. Now we have the... Now, what's the song Inferno about? John, you're going to have to take that one over, buddy. It's, it's basically about uh, Dante's Inferno. About Dante's Inferno? Yep. What's Dante? Yep, it's, what, uh, what's that? Don, it's a it's a poem. It's an old poem. Uh, the Divine it's, Comedy. Yeah, it's the Divine Comedy. Yeah, I didn't. I, I, I didn't pay attention in, in high school, so <laughs> is that what you learned? Uh, I didn't learn. I learned about Shakespeare. That's about it. Well, hey Somebody, man, you earlier you had asked about writing lyrics about a video game. Technically, Dante's Inferno is also a video game. Also a game. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was like the Xbox version of God of War. Okay, so pretty much. Now you got the band. Pretty much, you guys haven't gone on any like. Have you guys gone on any at all U.S. tours, or you guys just kind of stayed local to where you're at? Um, so we've we've traveled a lot to play shows like festivals and stuff in the summertime. Uh, we've been, I don't know, we've been to uh, Indianapolis, or I'm sorry, not Indianapolis, Illinois. Uh, we've been to uh, Battle Creek, Michigan, to play. We've been uh, to Florida. We've we've kind of been around, but I mean, generally we, we try to stick to this area. Uh, right now, like the the metal scene is kind of starting to itself back up over in uh, towards North Carolina and uh, Virginia, and okay. we're probably going to try to work our way over over there as soon as shows really become a possibility again. Uh, but yeah, we've traveled to a lot of shows, but I, I think you could say we're we've tried to stay more local. Have you guys played any shows at all? Wait, we talked about before uh, on the last podcast we did that we weren't able to air. You guys are pretty much shut down for the most part, huh? Yeah. Um, it, it, where we're at right now, I mean, coronavirus restrictions are really strong. Like, a lot of bars and stuff just don't even open because the they, they can only have so many people inside the bar. They can't have live music. Or if you do have live music, most venues aren't like equipped to space people out properly like they should be. Um, you know, so a lot of places like just little hole in the wall bars are shut down, but you can still go get your liquor at like Applebee's or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Are, are, would, would places, even if the whole band can't play, are places still open to like acoustic shows out there? Like a one man kind of band? There, there are a couple venues that I'm aware of that, you know, if you wanted to come play acoustic guitar and, you know, let people throw change in your guitar case or whatever, the, that's probably still okay. Um, but for the most part, I mean, like, you know, if you've got three or more people in your band, there's not a whole lot of, <laughs> not a whole lot of, uh, you can do that right now. Yeah. And you guys got five of y'all motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I mean, like Kentucky is, is been in the news this year a lot about coronavirus uh rules and regulations because our the new governor has really stepped up and you know shut everything down and tried to keep people you know wrangled as much as possible uh it's not always successful but uh you know things have been getting better man i think with the virus uh getting you know everybody's starting to get the uh the vaccination for it now yeah Yeah, it's uh, I would say, I mean, you know, I'm I'm hopeful that we can play some shows later this year. Uh, if not, you know, I guess 2022 will be the year. But we're uh, <laughs> we're just we're just waiting for somebody to say, okay, bands can come tour again, and then we're on the way. Yeah, as long as the, <laughs> as long as the super COVID doesn't affect and the vaccine, dude, I swear to God, this is the end of the world, man. My biggest fear is that this coronavirus spreads to a bigger virus that the vaccine can't control. Next thing you know, you get it, you're guaranteed to be dead, and then the fucking world's extinct of, of humans and animals take over, and that's our. And then like a million years go by, and now we're like the dinosaurs from new, some new species that said there used to be intelligent creatures on this planet. You know? <laughs> uh, I've, I think my biggest fear is that somehow it, it starts to develop where people can become zombies from it. Yeah, you know, I yeah, I, you know, when 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 coronavirus first came about, I was like freaking scared of everything, dude. Like I was scared, and then I actually had it, and I'm one of the lucky ones who didn't have it bad. Yeah, like, I did not, and I swear, I, I it's my own theory. I think it's blood type. I don't know that for a fact. Has anyone in your guys' band caught it yet? No, we've, as far as we know, we've all been lucky enough to not have coronavirus. Uh, I've been tested for it a couple times, but I've never came back positive. 
So I yeah. is is it is it pretty bad in Kentucky? I mean, it's not the population is not that big where you guys are at, right? 